Welcome everybody. This is the Thursday evening Viper Trading Webinar. If you are here to learn about trading the futures markets using the Viper tools, you are absolutely in the right place. Let's go ahead and knock out our standard disclaimer so we can get over to some charts and start looking at trades. All communications from Viper Trading Systems are for educational purposes only. Futures and Forex trading does involve risk and there is a risk of loss. Nothing contained in this webinar or other webinars, including the live trading room, are to be construed as investment or trading advice. And of course, everybody in here does know that you do trade at your own sole discretion. All right, with that out of the way, let's get over here to the charts. Uh, first topic, it, it, before we kick this uh, little shindig off here, we uh, had some questions from the team, and one of them was in regards to trading the first 30 minutes and how, uh, you know, sometimes they get, uh, some traders get uh, ch chopped up in that first half an hour, first 10 minutes, 5, 10, 15 minutes, right around the open time. So, of course, everybody knows I'm here in California, so the open of the equity markets here in the U.S. is at 6.30 Pacific, so that would be right here on NASDAQ today. Now, I want to observe the first uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Going into the pre-market, we would have made note of the fact that uh, midnight going into this morning was over here. So this would have been the European session trading on NASI overnight. I think there was some favorable, there's been favorable news uh, early in the mornings, and so we've had sort of these little bit of moves where it chops around makes an attempt to run up, you know, runs up here. And so going into 6.30, you know, we were we were kind of thinking a little bit bullish. There's the open right there. And, you know, we could have put a couple of lines on here uh, at support and resistance, which we talk about doing all the time. You had some support, you know, kind of in here, and you had some resistance up here. This is in your pre-market uh, pre preparation to, uh, to trade the open. Um... But let's look at exactly right when the market opened on NASDAQ. Let's look at what happened here. Uh, okay, you're flatlining around the mid-band. You come down, you sort of check support here just under the mid-band. Now we're about five minutes in. Okay. You may have tried to, tried to box this for a long and got sucked into it perhaps. Uh, but it's pretty choppy. It comes up and it tests the top a couple of times. Tests the mid-band. Now we're about eight, nine, ten minutes into the market, pushing up a little higher. You could have boxed this. I think I'm trying to remember. Did we take this long? Anybody remember on Nazi? Did we box that and take a long? I can't remember. So many trades since then. You know, I think we caught this either on this pop right here or this little pullback. But anyway, you could have had a little bit of a long trade there. Now we come back down. We chop around the mid band, and I think I remember this. Now we're about 15 minutes in. As I recall, I think we threw a box around here. Anybody remember that? I think I think we did. Anyway, uh, now here's the thing in the morning. So we're about 15 minutes in. So most of the chop and confusion happens in the first 15 minutes. Um, and I'm not I'm not I don't I don't want to make a blanket statement across the market saying that the first 15 minutes is taboo and you should not tr uh, trade it. But there is clearly a lot of chop going on here, and it's possible that you could have gotten. You know, one trade where you maybe got sort of faked into and stopped out here. You know, something like this. If you had boxed it, maybe get sucked into a long and then you stop out for a full hit right out of the gate. Maybe you catch this long or you got in late on it and you only scalped out a little bit of money. So now you're you're at 645, market's getting ready to make a move, and you're upside down already, digging out of a hole. Anybody have Anybody dealing with that? First half an hour, you're digging out of a hole. It seems like every day. It feels like Groundhog Day. You know that movie? Or Fifty First Dates? Anybody remember that movie? Guy, wait, what, what was it? Who was in Fifty First Dates? It was Adam Sandler, and who's who was the gal? Um, what was her name? Um, it's a good movie. Uh, Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. And by the way, if you haven't seen that, that's a really cute, fun movie. It's it's old. It's probably 10, 15 years old. Um, but it was one of those things where they wake up and it's the thing starts all over again. And it's the same thing day after day after day. And so I had recalled a story when I was in the city trading on that floor up there 
that I would go through that same situation. The first 15, 20, 30 minutes, it just seemed like every morning I'd be digging out of a hole. By the time it got to seven, I'm trying to I'm trying to make a few hundred bucks just to get back to break even. And I'm seeing a lot of yeses coming in here almost every day from David. Okay, so so what we need to do now he, now here's the trade off. Here's what's going on mentally. All right, and I understand it because I live it. Right, I lived it for years. Is that you know if you if you don't jump in, you're afraid you're going to miss big moves. Right, I mean isn't that the trade off? You're saying to yourself, you know what? I really, I sort of see some trades here. I better get in because this thing can run 80 ticks and I'm going to miss it. So in your mind, mentally, what you're doing to yourself is you're overriding the logical part of your brain, which is telling you, wait, be patient, wait. Something else will come down the line. You don't have to push it. You don't have to force it. Give it you know, 15 minutes till the market settles down and starts to reveal itself to you, I'll step in and pull the trigger and take some trades. Now, let me ask you this question. From a statistical point of view, what are the odds in the first 15 minutes of you missing the big move of the day? Let me just think about it for a second. What are the odds that in this first 15 minutes of trading right here that you're going to miss the big move of the day right here? You're going to miss it if you don't take it. The odds. What are the odds? 5%? 10%? 50%? chance you're going to miss the big move right here. I'm talking statistically speaking from day to day in the first 15 minutes. 60% that you're going to miss it? 1 in 4, says Maurizio. 10 in 20, says MG. Not great. Well, listen, I haven't tracked this specific thing, but if I was a betting man, I would put my money on 5 to 10%, certainly much less than 20%. So what I'm saying is this, just to be clear and wrap this issue up, and perhaps, you know, if this gives you some solace in the morning, uh, you can think about this when you're pondering this in the first 15 minutes and you're watching the uh, market shoot around all over the place thinking you're going to miss it. There's probably, don't, I'm, I'm guessing here, but I'm just going to put some numbers down here, only a 10 to 20% chance that you're going to miss the big move in the first 15 minutes of trading. I'm just, I'm just guessing, but I'm, I, I would, in my experience, I would put it somewhere in that area, miss the big move of the day. Now, if you believe that and you think that's close to being true, then an in your logical mind needs to override your greedy mind, which is telling you to get in there and take trades. Let's move on and see if we uh, have a point to be made here. Here we are at 645 and let's, let's go ahead and just advance the market and start to see what happens. Here we talked about putting a little mid-band box around 644, 645. She comes down, hits support, pulls back a little bit, rolls off of the stealth. We took this in the room, remember? Remember, we took this in the room, we were short here. And look at that drop. And then, after that, it came up and we called this live. I remember 17 and a quarter distinctly, I remember this. Came up and gave you another chance to take a short right here. Remember? Remember we said it. Gary and I called this out. Remember? In fact, we called this level out when it was down here. Remember? Anybody? Anybody trading? I remember. Anyway. All right. So it came down, and then it stopped out, and then it chopped around a little bit here, and then we got another mid-band box here. Anybody remember this one? I distinctly remember this one because at this point, I was starting to load the boat up a little bit. Pops up, and what happens right there? What was that? What was this move right here? No, 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 no. I remember. No, 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 no. Let me correct myself. The box was here. Everybody remember that? The box was here, and we said let it go either way. Remember that? Remember this box? So by this point, we're, we're, at, uh, we're coming up on 7 o'clock. We're in the second half of the first half an hour. We're at 6.45 to 7, 
and we've had one, two, three legitimate trades. Yeah, Mindy, I, I think that was definitely a double bottom, and I recall pointing that out in real time. So here's the trader who didn't trade in the first 10, 15 minutes and waited for a good setup. And let's suppose that you missed this first one. Let's just suppose you missed this, this altogether. You didn't even get that first leg. You just completely missed it. Did you have other trades that came along? Uh, uh, Mindy, I, I see comments coming in here. Okay, I'd like to, if we, uh, I'm trying to look at this from a 20,000 foot perspective. I, I, we'll, we'll circle back later and talk about specifics on trade entries, okay? Let's not, I don't want to get bogged down in, in like the color of bars inside of a box or anything like that. Let's not get sidetracked with that. All, my point is really I'm trying to make is that if you don't trade the first 10, 15 minutes, you're not going to move the big, you're not going to miss the big move of the day. You're just not. And that there's tons of other moves that come way after that. And you and you can be rest assured that they will come. And you can take them. Don't go into 7 o'clock, 645 in the hole every morning. you got to break that cycle. Ne it's negative uh, uh, psychologically. It's not good for your trading account. And it took me a long time to fix that. But when I did, everything turned around. I started being profitable consistently. Because I'm not digging out of this big hole right out of the gate. I don't know. That's my advice of the evening in regards to that first 15, 20 minutes or whatever. Just stay the heck out of it. And don't worry that you're going to miss anything because you're not. All right, let's advance the chart. Let's move on through the rest of the session and quickly see what happened. And then we'll, I have some other things I want to talk about. Let me tighten up this chart and just quickly move through the rest of the morning here so we uh, get a ton of other stuff we, we need to really cover here. Don't want to spend the whole session on this. Uh, David D. says thank you. That made the whole webinar for me. Well, hopefully everybody uh, here tonight and listening on the recording will uh, heed this uh, uh, little bit of advice. Relax the first 10, 15 minutes. Don't panic. Do it in sim. Sip some coffee. Watch the market. See what it's doing. Listen to some calls in the room. Take it easy. Don't pressure yourself. Tell yourself in, the, in, your, in your trading mind, when you get greedy, I'm missing a big move. It ain't going to happen now. And if it does, you know what? There'll be a big pullback, and I'll catch that. That's what I tell myself. Yeah, early in the morning, sometimes you hear some, you know, first couple of five, ten minutes. Sometimes I don't say very much. I might observe some, some swing levels, right? Oh, yeah, you got some support here and resistance up here, but a lot of times I'm not in a trade. And if I am, I'd just be dipping the toe maybe with one contract, sort of just to get the feel of the market, right? Yeah, here we are. Look, okay, here's 7 o'clock. We've had one, two, three nice, nice trades. Now here we are at 7. A uh, little bit of chop. Rolls over, comes down to support. We get a little bounce. You had a trade there. And then we started to go into short mode right in here. And we were shorting, and we were shorting, and it broke down, and we got a nice little breakdown. Then we go into the chop. Now, does everybody remember this? We had a trading range here. We broke up. We had several trades trading in the range. We called that out. People were taking them inside the range. We have a nice pop up here, back up to resistance. There was a mid-band box that set up. I think we called it, as I recall, right in here. Pick your spots. There's another trade. Comes back down. And then we had this whole series into the close. Everybody remember this on NASDAQ? Remember this? Remember these? Gary and I called them out live. Every one, when it came to the mid-band, it bounced and gave you 15 ticks. Five of them, right in a row. Four or five of them. Bam, bam, bam. Boom. Called out support. Bip, up to the top. Bip, up to the top. Up to the All the way down. And I had a nice run here right after 8 o'clock. So what I'm circling back here, let's, let's get this all on the thing and put this on the table. I wonder if I can get this whole thing on here to make my point. Oh, geez, it's a mess. <laughs> okay, let's do it this way. Let's get this big honking thing on. Let's get some of this drawing stuff off of here. Let me clean this chart up. Stand by. I just want to clean, and I'll finish this point, and we'll move on. Okay, remove, get get all this stuff off of here. Let's get these off of here, too. Let's just make this clean. 
All right, so here is the first, you know, 10, 15 minutes in terms of volatility, looking at volatility now, right? This is your volatility at the open, right in here, right? More or less. Here is your volatility after 645. See these big swings up and down? Up, down, little sideways, nice move down. Some nice range trading, some scalping, poke up. Big drop down here, right before the room closed. And then we had five little scalpers in a row for 15 ticks. You could have missed all of the trading and not came in until 745 and just caught these five, four, 15 tick and put a couple of contracts on it, you'd be up 500 bucks. You could have slept in until 730. Come up, fire up your charts and take these trades alone and you would have made money. And you didn't even catch any of this other stuff. And you certainly avoided that. All right, any other questions on this? So please promise me, pinky swear with everybody on the team that you will not get beat up early in the morning on chop. You're going to wait patiently for good moves and then step in and take them. Uh, Minnie asking a question here about the predictors. Um, David T says, I promise. Good. Seriously, everybody, okay? I'm not, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of quasi not being facetious here. I'm trying to make a point. My point is that you're not going to miss anything. Tell your greedy brain, settle down. <laughs> Calm down. There's going to be tons of moves coming on the day. Tons of moves. Big, nice, good moves. And I'm going to wait for them. And I'll take them then. Sit out the first 15, 30 minutes. You're not missing anything. <laughs> Mindy, I don't know if that... Mindy wants to start drinking early in the morning. I, you know, I, I don't know if that's a good idea. Uh, yeah, that, that probably would not lead to good results. But uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so what was the question here? Oh, yeah, so you know what? Here's the thing with the predictors, okay? It, it, it's like any tool that we have. You know, you look in our list of indicators, got the object trader with all the different, you know, functionality on it. Um, sometimes I toggle the predictors on when I need to look at them. Uh, and sometimes, you know, frankly, I, I toggle them off if I don't feel that I need that information. And, and uh, for instance, it, you know, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't want to say anything disparaging about the predictors, but, uh, you know, sometimes when you're in a tight range, it's good that it shows the swings. So it helps give clarity in, in that regards. Uh, if you feel it's a little too crowded for your liking, well, then you just toggle them off. And you come back and you're like, oh, I wonder where those little predictors are. And you toggle it right back on. That's what I do. I toggle them on and off. Uh, you know, they're up in the room all the time, 100%. Nobody toggles them off in the room, but that's kind of what I do. All right, so here's the next thing I want to do. I want to pull up some various instruments, and I want to work together on looking at good trade entries um, as a team very quickly. I'm going to toggle through a lot of them very quickly. And then let's see if we can pull up a couple of live charts here uh, before we wrap and, and get one or two one or two trades off. The last time we've done that, uh, we call that active trade management, where we actually can put a trade tonight on a chart and watch it. Um, so let's get some instruments. If you could, please type in type in what you would like to see me show in the next, you know, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes in terms of trade entries. Let's go ahead and I'll make some notes here. Type in the instruments you want to see. And we'll get them up here and we'll start looking at them. Just take a minute and get some instruments up here. What do you want me to show tonight? By the way, hey, while you're typing that in there, here, let me let me get a sheet and jot these down. Uh, you know, I trade it with all this volatility. I got to tell you something. I was sitting here last night. I had some free time on my hands. And this doesn't happen every night, but it happens sometimes. Last night, there was some really good moves on NASDAQ. I think I made a couple of 300 bucks in about like an, less than an hour. Um, I think I got long on, you know, it, it pulled back. It was one of these kinds of things, just, just, like, just like you see right here, just like these. There was a pullback like into the mid band here. I, I can't remember where it was. It was like a little pullback here. And I didn't, I think I did a region box and it filled it. And then um, I did two, and I peeled off a peeled like a little scalper real quick, and then the thing just took off. It just, 
And sometimes that does that. You know, if you're trading uh, uh, after hours in the evening time, like this Asian session we're going into, keep, you know, and you it, it, do it in sim. You don't have to do it live. I did it live. Um, but uh, it, the word of caution here is that uh, uh, you could experience some slippage. Um, so your fills might not be that great. So make sure you use a limit order. Uh, if you're using OT, you know, make sure you get in there real quick. And don't get a, you know, you don't want to get filled up here. Uh, you know, and it gets stopped out, so that doesn't work. And do it in sim until you get a good feel for it, because you know you won't be in a room. Nobody will be helping you. You'll be on your own trying to figure that out. So just take it lightly, especially after hours. And sometimes it can be erratic. You might get a pop all of a sudden, and then bam, it's right back in your face. And you don't want to lose money after hours. So it's you know, and I rarely do that. I just saw the perfect setup and I took it. Okay, let's see here. So we've got. Uh, let me. What, what do we want to see here? We've got uh, NASDAQ, we've got 6J, and we've got EMD. All right. Tell you what, I'm going to tee up EMD, and then we'll tee up 6J, because 6J might be moving, and we might actually be able to throw a trade or two on there. Uh, okay, EMD. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Pardon me. Hold on. Ah, my EMD uh, data is bad. Uh, I'm missing about a day's worth of data there. I don't know what happened. Um, I don't trade EMD, so I don't know how much data is in this database. Uh, after the market closed from noon uh, to 1 o'clock, which is the close of the market here in California, which is over here, we had a, you can see here clearly we had a trading range that we were in, trading range, trading range. She consolidated the mid-band for a little while. Uh, you, you can clearly see right after the close of the markets, you got a little pop up. Nazi's moving, by the way, everybody. It's taking that top out of 28. Um, yeah, so, you know, you've been kind of just sort of gr grinding, grinding our way back up here. Um, you had a little bit of a pullback here to get in, kind of like the NASDAQ chart, sort of right in here. I know a lot of traders, a lot of you don't like to take something above the mid-band. You want it to hit the mid-band and bounce. But in a good move, sometimes you don't get that. It comes within a few ticks of it, and then you bounce. You don't have to be afraid too much of taking these, these, uh, uh, these uh, boxes. Like the NASDAQ one, for instance, remember this morning we took that one that was a little bit above the, the mid-band? Here's the thing with those. Okay, let me show it on this one. Let's talk about this. Try, try to alleviate a little fear uh, in this area. I know what the fear is because when I take it, I feel it too. Okay, so don't don't worry about feeling uh, odd about this. You're, you're afraid that uh, you're going to get a little head fake in here, right? You're going to get filled long and then things going to flip and give you a total stop out. So how do we deal with that? Well, when you get into it, and your initial stop is, say, 12 ticks down. Let's say you're filled here and your initial stop's down here somewhere. Let me ask you the question. Do you have to leave it down there? When you get filled on this long trade of the box that's not at the mid-band, you get filled here and you're long, do you have to leave your stop all the way down here? What do you think? And risk the fact that you could be sucked into a head fake and it comes and blammo takes you out like, well, in this case it worked out, so you're still in a long trade. But hypothetically, I know the fear of putting the box there, that's what it is. No, no, of course you don't. When you get filled, you know, within a bar or two, take the stop up here. In this case, you got filled over here, you're long. And then you start trailing your stop up, right? You start trailing your stop up. So what's your risk now? I don't know, six ticks, eight ticks maybe, up here, nothing, four ticks. Don't. What I'm saying is don't be afraid to take trades like this. A lot of these turn out to be very good trades. And, and, and try to alleviate your fear of getting a full stop out. Because if you manage this active trade management, okay, active trade, let me be clear what we're trying to say here. The difference between active trade management and passive trade management is what? What is, what is the difference there? What are we talking about? Active trade management. What are you even talking about, Charles? That, I don't know what you're even, what is that supposed to be? Active what? Passive trade management. What, you know, 
I don't know, it's just words to me. <clears throat> like, let's say we put Object Trader on this thing right here, okay? And we put one lot on, and OT took it, and we're filled long on this bar right here. And OT's all dialed in, you know, it's got the targets, maybe it's got a target up here, you know, maybe you have the trail stops engaged, maybe you don't. Taking action versus sitting back, Mandy. That's ex Mindy, that's exactly what that is. So that's when when we say the words, okay, take your stop up here, take your stop up here, take your stop up, unless you have OT doing it for you, this is taking action. This is active trade management. Passive trade management would be you let um, OT fill the, fill the trade, and then you sit back and you let OT, and it's either going to, you know, it's either going to come up here and hit my target, or it's going to come down here and stop out. And I know traders that do that. Seriously. I mean, it's hard to believe, but it's true. They'll put the target in their stop, and they'll say it's either going to hit this, or it's going to hit that. You're going to hit one of these two, and there's no movement. You know, it's no trailing, no dragging this down to get within a swing. All the things we discuss. Many, many times you're going to find that this, the percentage success of your results is going to go up dramatically if you take active trade management. You get in there and you start moving things around a little bit. I mean, you don't have to be shuffling the thing constantly, you know, up here, pull it down, should I get filled? How tight do I put the stop? Where is all this? Get st worrying about all of it. No, just manage it like we teach. Fault trail your stop up with a little bit of, little bit of wiggle room underneath. Get your target near uh, near a swing or a predictor or something, you know, where you want it to get filled, and then let it go ahead and do its thing. Let's go back for a day or two and let's together look at EMD trade setups and let's see if we can call a couple out. Okay, let's move on and get. Some, let's look at uh, let's look at yesterday on EMD because I know some of you trade it. <coughs> Stand by. You know, the first of the year, I got that when that pollen came out, and I started getting that got that cough. It's still still a little tickle down in there. <clears throat> that's the hardest. That's the hardest. Uh, when those tickles get stuck in your throat, it's tough. It's brutal. <coughs> Hold on. Sorry about that. I have some green tea that I drank that, that tries to quell that down a little bit. All right, let's look at yesterday on EMD. And I'm going to do this. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this. You know, let's do this. Let's do this together. All right, this is just before the open on EMD yesterday morning. This is this is right before the open. This is the pre-market session. <clears throat> or the other day, March 29th. Okay, we're going back a few days. This is the morning of March 29th. What's the first thing we do? We get up. We make our coffee. We turn on the screen monitors, log into Ninja, pull up the charts. We're sitting at our desk, and we're looking at this chart, and what do we do? What do you do? That's I guess that's the question. What it, I'm speaking directly to everybody in here tonight and listening on the recording. What do you do? And do you do it? Look at the past. Draw some lines. Look at support and resistance. Put some lines on the chart where there's swings. See where the market's been. Good. So let's do that. It, it takes you know 30 seconds. You put a you put a swing up here. I mean this is so it's it's everybody you've seen this a thousand times. It should be just like a total no-brainer for you at this point, right? Gary does it all morning long in the room live. I put them on my charts too. It's not just such as some random thing. It's it's a real thing that works. I don't, fact, frankly, quite honestly, I don't know how anybody trades without them. Check for the news. Put your lines on the charts. Good. <clears throat> I, 
I think we all would agree that uh, these are support and resistance areas, and going forward in the morning, we'll have to watch them to see what happens. Are we going to be breaking up here? Are we going to stay inside of here or here? Are we going to break down and go lower? Okay, let me advance the chart to the open, and we'll all look at this together. Here is the open of the market, right here. Does anybody see any trades? <clears throat> anybody see any trades? Just type in a yes or a no. You don't have to call out the trade what it is if you've seen one, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna show something here in a second. So just two seconds. Yes or no, you see a trade. Why you see a trade? No, you don't. That simple. Just a wire in. Yes, I see a trade. No, I don't. Couple of yeses, Tom and Mario, a whole bunch of no's. I mean, this is literally the market open, 6.30 Pacific. Literally the market open. So now let me ask the secondary part of the same question. Could you have taken the, uh, most of you said no. Okay, that, that's, there are a couple of three of you that said yes. Now let me show you something here. And this might change your mind for you that said yes. <clears throat> now are there any trades at the open? Could you have taken them conceivably? In other words, within the first minute of trading, less than a minute of trading, all these bars shotgunned. Here's six. Here's the beginning of 6:30. Here's the ending of 6:30 in the first minute. No, you couldn't have shorted that. No way. <laughs> There's like 30 bars here in less than a minute. You could not have possibly caught that. There's no way. 30, I don't know how many bars are here, 20 or 30 bars in less than a minute. There's no way, any, unless you're a robot. <laughs> you know, if, if you had a computer trading, it, it might have caught it, depending on the programming algorithm you had running at the time. It's possible it could, but your fill would have been terrible. There's 24 bars in a minute. You can't trade that. It's not humanly possible to do. A computer might have got some of it. So question to those EMD traders out here. Is it a good idea to trade the first two minutes of EMD in the morning? What do you think? Here, let's advance a little bit more. Here's 631. Here's 632. Here's 633. Yeah, it's way too fast. No, you shouldn't trade the first minute. I mean, that overemphasizes what we were trying to say earlier, right? This is what we, we said, don't worry about the first, you know, I don't know, 5 to 10, 15 minutes. Don't worry about it. That is a shotgun. There's no way humanly possible you could have caught a trade there. Just not. This would be like, this would be like trading akin to uh, uh, crude oil inventory at 7.30 when you get a shotgun of bars. I mean, you don't want to get it in front of a freight train. There's just nothing to be had here. All right, let me advance the chart, and let me, let's, as a team, look to make some calls. All right, ready? Let's make some trades calls together. Okay, now we can see that we're in we're about 6 minutes into the market open now. We rolled over, we we came a little bit above the range, we shot gun down, we came back up 2-3 minutes later, we rolled off resistance one more time. <clears throat> what what, what what at this point here you're trading EMD and you're about six minutes in and you notice that the market has now done this. So what might we be thinking our next trade might be that we're going to look for? Looking ahead to the right 
observing the current price action, what I'll give you 10 seconds. Long. In fact, you don't even have to call out where, what or where you would do it. Are you looking to get long or short? 10 seconds. L or an S. That's all you got to type in. You, know, you don't have to do any more than that. And we'll talk about the trade setup. Ooh, interesting mix here. I'm really surprised. A lot of S's and a couple of three L's. Wow, okay. Hmm. All righty. Cast your vote. Cast your vote. Two seconds left. Two seconds left on the clock. Short. Okay. Yeah, I would be looking to short this too. Yes. And I know everybody would say we're looking to short it up at the mid-band. There's clearly some resistance here and support, prior support. And we would be looking for a rollover anywhere up in here to get short. That would be the plan, right? So I want this to help with everybody because in addition to active trade management, we want to, we want to, get, the, we want to get the most advantageous entries that we can. And so in order to do that, we have to project our thought beyond the right-hand side of the chart. We call that looking forward, right? We're looking forward. We're observing what's happened here. We're looking at support and resistance levels. We're looking at support levels, getting broken or not getting broken. Looking at background colors and bar colors. And we're forming an opinion about the market, which leads us to look beyond here. And we're not trying to look in a crystal ball. We're not trying to forecast and, and guess or predict the market. But in order to take a good trade, we have to be prepared, yes? And in order to be prepared, we have to know where we're going to get in. Now, look what happens right here. What happens right there? Right here. This was our sweet spot. And it came right up to it. It's in it. It's in the middle of it. Yeah, that's a short setup right there. Turned out to be a nice one, too. I mean, I don't know where your fill would be, but, um, you know, say you got filled on the bar underneath the mid-band there, dropped all the way down, depending on your trail stop. You put a couple of contracts on that, you got, uh, looks like, I don't know, 35 ticks. Two contracts would be 300 bucks. You put a two lot on this trade on EMD. No, wait a minute. No, EMD is still ten dollars a short. Uh, ten dollars a tick, right? In, in all fairness, let's do this. Let's say that you took a short. Uh, you got filled on this bar right here. You got a scalper off at ten ticks, and then you rode the one down to the till it stopped out. <clears throat> And here was your stop out down here. Let's just do some quick math. Uh, 1,750, and you got out on the runner at uh, 17. So that's 30. This is 30. And let's call this one 10. 40 ticks. <clears throat> Times 10 is $400. This one trade on EMD, short, on this box right here, on the rollover at the mid-band, and you had a 10 tick scalp and a 30 tick runner that stopped out right in here, depending on the timing and the fills, at $10 a tick is a $400 trade. Right there, that one. So the point, I'm, what I'm trying to drive home here is this, is that I think the other part of, and I, and I talk to traders all the time about this, all the time about this very issue. And what it is, is, is you want, everybody wants to try to catch every trade that comes, as many trades as possible that come along. And part of the thinking is, well, if I take more trades, I'll increase my odds of getting good ones, right? Is that true? In other words, the more trades you take, does it increase your odds of getting good ones, the more trades you take? Let me just, just sort of step back for a second and think about it. In other words, all these trades that come along all morning long here in the first, say, hour and a half, all the trades, trade here, trade here, trade here, pull back, trade there, 
Are you trying to get all of them? Is that the, is that the, uh, is that the idea? We try to get every single one we can. The more we take, the more money we stand to make because we, the chances are better we're going to get more good trades. <clears throat> no. In fact, from a sheer statistical point of view, it's quite the opposite. It's absolutely quite the opposite is true. That the more you take, the more trades you take, the more higher likelihood it is that you're going to lose, right? I mean, think about think about a coin toss, right? Think about a coin toss, or think about anything statistical, right? You do one, you know, right? Let's let's think about this for a second. Let's just talk about this for a second. Here, let's do it this way. I'm not going to spend too much on this, but I want I want you to think about this for a second because it's really important. I mean, I know I, I talk to traders all the time and. They'll say, you know what, Charles? I'll tell you what. I nailed, I nailed two good trades, and they put three contracts on it, and they made their morning. I took three good trades, and I put five lot on it, and my morning's done. Here, let's do it like this. Most of you know, about 7:30 a day, I was done. I wasn't calling trades anymore. I was completely finished. All right, here you go in. You pull the trigger, and you get one winning trade. Oops, wrong line. Sorry, stand, stand, let's talk about this here real quick. Oops, wrong one. Do they have a short, a little stubby one? Yeah. Here, you take one trade and you have a winner. Now you take two trades and you get another winner. From a statistical point of view, what are the odds that the next one are going to be, the next trade you take, a winner or a loser? All right, let's say, let's say you pull the trigger and you get a third winner. Now, are the, odds, are the odds more in favor of another winner or another loser? All right, let's take it one step further. Here, now you, you really, you, you, you get it, but you, you, you got three and you made decent money and now you pull off a scalper, but you almost lost and you barely got like scraped out a couple of ticks on it. Now, what are the odds of the next one being a winner? You, you see where I'm going with this, right? So from a sheer statistical point of view, is it better off that you go into the morning saying to yourself, I'm going to be extremely selective and only look for a small handful of trades that I feel are going to be very, very good and have a high likelihood of me making money, whether it's 50 bucks or 200 bucks, it doesn't matter. They just need to be winners. And that every winner I notch under my belt, the likelihood goes up that there's going to be one of these. We, we all can see that, right? You don't have to be a statistical genius to understand that, right? <laughs> you, everybody get my point? So we don't go into the morning. I personally don't go into the morning and say to myself, man, I hope we get a lot of setups today. and I, I hope they just come in and just nail a whole bunch of them, you know? Every little pullback, everywhere it goes, you know, flip it, go up, catch the long, get the pullback. I'm going to get all these trades. Look at this big run. I'm going to miss it if I don't get it. Here between here, and I'm just going to reemphasize going back to the earlier question. I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, I don't want to sound like a, I'm beating the same drum over and over again, but let me just try to make this point. Here's the volatility in the first 15 minutes on EMD. Here is the volatility all the way until 8 o'clock. You had this move, which we showed, and then you had this move right here. In the case of EMD on the morning of the 29th, did, did we need to be in a hurry to catch anything in the first 15 minutes? Was there not good trades that came afterwards that set up that we could have taken? The box here, the pullback here, the pullback here, here's a clear mid-band bounce, 
that took off and had a great you could have ignored everything you could have you couldn't even touch this market till almost 7:30 and caught that and that would have made your morning right there this one trade alone it went from uh depending on your fill looks like 1704 ish on this bar filled long say right in here depending on how you drew the box all the way up into here to eight uh 1708 40 ticks one contract would be four hundred dollars on that trade alone right there two would be eight hundred so that's what I mean about being selective. You know, for instance, you, like I said, if you, if you hear me being quiet in the room, it's because I'm not kind of trying to catch every trade. I try to be very selective, and I look for the most optimal setups in that window of time. And when they present themselves, you got to be prepared to step in and take them. And if they're really, if it's in a nice trend move, you can you can leverage up, put two, four, five, six, eight, ten contracts on it, and then and then really make some money. That's how you do it. That's how the pros do it. That's how we do it. And don't worry about getting in there and scalping all manner of stuff right at the open, trying to get all whack-a-mole around. All right, there was a question about 6J. Any questions here? So how are we going to change? Question to the team. Just take a second and type this in. Is anybody in here tonight or listening to this recording, are you going to do anything proactively tomorrow, tonight, tomorrow morning, whenever you're going to trade, to change your trading behavior. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to do the same thing you've been doing or is something going to change tomorrow? You can type in a yes or no or you can type in what you're going to change. That's what this is all about. That's why you come to these. I mean, that's why we try to sh share our wisdom together and work together in these webinars like this is to help change behavior in a positive way with positive results because you keep doing the same thing all over again tomorrow morning guess what it's gonna be like Groundhog Day 630 to 7, 7 o'clock you're in the hole and you're digging out of it again right you're trying to catch every trade you understand in your mind statistically each trade you take a winner the odds of a loser can't go up but you still want to take more trades more trades more trades you don't change that behavior next thing you know it starts to look like this Oops, missed another one. Dot, got in late on that one. Oh, got filled, got a bad fill on that one. I got really hammered, full stop out on two lot. Oh, no, Just, I, can't, I can't seem to get it. What's going on? <laughs> All right, I love these answers. You guys and gals are the best. David D., I'm going to be selective. I'm going to be more patient. Learn to be more selective. Less trades, less scalping from Philip. Wait, wait, wait. Something has to change because I'm doing what I'm doing is not working. Mindy, got to change what you're doing. If you don't change, you're the only one that controls you. You're the only one that can make yourself successful and make yourself happy. Nobody else can do that for you. Patience. Wait for the best of the best trade setups. My mental approach, try to settle down and be more patient. Good. Pick my trade spots, Mario. <laughs> Michael, I'm going to wear my lucky socks. <laughs> uh, well, then I'm going to quit trading NASDAQ. There you go. I'm going to look at EMD instead of NASDAQ and tighten my stop sooner. Good. You know what? I'll tell you, in these things, the way you got to look at it is if you get some little snippet, some nugget out of these webinars that helps you be a better trader, make effective, good, positive change to what you're doing so you can start making money more consistently, then we succeed it because that's why we do these, right? And sometimes, you know, you got to step back. We all get pulled down, sucked into the quagmire of all these bars and this, and it's at the mid-band, but it went too far, and I'm nervous. I can't pull this trigger. And What if it flips in my face and I stop out? Well, we talked about all those, right? And if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you're going to get the same results. That's just the way trading works. It's the way the world works, right? Unfortunately, that's it. The world and the market are stern taskmasters. And if you don't get with a program and change, it will change you. That's how that goes. Trust me, I know it. Anyway, okay, that's a wrap. Any final questions? 
Uh, Dennis says he wants to go into market replay data and practice, practice, practice until I find a good instrument. Uh, Michael, mid-band boxes are the best. I mean, I could, in all regards, you could put up one or two or three charts and just wait for mid-band trades, and that was the only type of trade you took, and you can make a very good living. Absolutely. They happen all the time. And most of you know that's my favorite go-to trade. Mid-band trades are by far my favorite go-to trade. No question about it. I'll take those all morning long. I don't have to take a lot of them either. You know, I can score a couple, three, four of them, load the boat a little bit on them, and leverage up and make the money. 